is known as the toughest man in the world. Presenting Andrew the Brick Wall Sosa. What is up, my friends? How y'all doing? This is your boy Sosa Pons coming at you with the Moonfall early screening. Earth, we have a problem. Movie review. There will be spoilers in this, but it's only going to be light spoilers. I promise you, I'm not going to ruin the movie at all for you. But if you don't want to be spoiled, turn away now. But you should listen to what I have to say. Just trust me on this one. Before we go ahead and get started, please smash that thumbs up, like button, sub, hit the bell on all, and share this around with everybody on the channel. Leave a comment, support the messed up YouTube algorithm. And without further ado, let's go into it. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Like, seriously, I did. I, the first thing I want to talk about is the actors before I get into any plot details or anything like that. The they did some stellar jobs within this one. Not not everyone was a standout performance, but John Bradley, there's a reason he's at the front of this movie, played by Casey Houseman. I had possibly seen him in other movies before, but he always had kind of more mediocre roles. And he kind of sounds like that, you know, are we the baddies guy? He's you know, that English or British, I don't know what kind of accent it is, but it's an accent. Dude can act. Man, this guy can act act he was such a good actor within this film i have to give him the props within this one he was absolutely amazing not only as an actor but also his role within this in this movie was also really cool like he's a and i'm surprised with the direction that they went with this movie guys like seriously like they did some woke and some anti-woke so we're gonna give this movie a thumbs up for at least compromising I don't, it, politics should just be left out of movies, uh, you know, unless it's done really subtly or subliminally in a good way. It's really hard to do that nowadays because most people just don't know how and they get the politics wrong anyways. But if you're going to put politics in your movie, it's good that you at least cater to both audiences. And that's what this one does. This one only has a tiny bit of wokeness. It's not even, it's not even the, like, the cringy wokeness. It's not any of that, but there is definitely some very forced diversity aka hate straight white males but it's not done in a cringy way or in an outright way stating stated or anything like that it's just a bit due to the casting and the places that they fill those roles in they still have plenty of white dudes in there and they're they're not trying to be too apparent with it you just can obviously tell what they're doing with some of these casting choices it's not at all like i understand this is a fictional story but it's supposed to be a spin-off of actual history back in the astronaut days whenever we lost two minutes of space time and they try to make it a whole conspiracy theory you know that it actually the cut and the feed was cut it, and we go into the reason why but it, like i said the force diverse that's it and that's not that big of a complaint i know other people make more fun of it than but i think the piece some people on my right wing side are a little bit too picky about that stuff but that's the only thing. It doesn't ruin the movie at all for you. It just makes you go, eh. And then you move on enjoying with the rest of the movie because there's actually some good straight white males portrayed within this one. So you can you can live with it. And Halle Berry does a great and great job too. She's always a little bit too snarky, you know, going back to the woke stuff to other people around her. But other than that, you know, it's understandable why she's doing it. You know, just could have laid off a little bit. But the uh, right wing stuff is that they actually glorify Elon Musk in it like on repeated times because john bradley you know is uh he's basically a conspiracy theorist who figure out, figures out all this stuff you know before everyone else does and then he's no longer a conspiracy theorist and that's what all the left tries to call the right wing people who you know just state facts you know and can obviously tell things down the road we're always proven right within a matter of months or a couple of years or something but so it handles to the right side as well. So that's good. I, you know, I'd rather it be out, but if you're going to do it, at least do it to both, and then everybody can be happy. So good and good for them on that. Uh, also, uh, Michael Pena, like he plays one of the stepdads in there, and it's not really an important role as the stepdad, but he plays a very loving stepdad. And now, now it's a true fact that stepdads, it's a very sad thing that they're more abusive than the average, you know, uh, uh, paternal uh, father or or you know same with moms or anything like that so to he actually light spoiler it was really not that integral to the plot but he actually sacrifices himself for his stepdaughter not his wife not them at the same time no he just straight up loves this daughter so much that he gives her his own oxygen mask and he suffocates and it's one of the sweetest scenes I've ever seen as a father. But not only it sets a great precedent for stepfathers, how they can love kids the same as their own, 
went, what a lucky girl that that mm, his wife is. Like, wow. We also have Donald Sutherland. I absolutely love him. Like, he plays Holden Field. He's only in the movie for, like, two minutes because he's explaining the government conspiracy to basically hide what they knew back in, like, 1970 and all that stuff. But I always love seeing him. Like, he is such a good actor. His voice is just soothing. <laughs> it, it's kind of like Morgan Freeman or something like that. He just has one of those kinds of, of appeals to me. And my, he's pretty much the only thing I like about the Hunger Games, unless you're imagining Jennifer Lawrence, you know, nude. But, you know, it, he the only good scene, like, within that whole series, pretty much, is whenever she shoots the arrow up at that magistrate leader. I, I forget what, but her... Who, is, who he said he's actually at the top of this whole horrible conspiracy, even though he's, like, terrible, and he does that uh, big laugh while he's spitting up blood. It is the most funny thing in the whole world. Now that we talked about the acting, let's just go over a little bit of the plot scenario. Basically, what this plot involves is AI run amok. Basically, humans have like created this whole vast civilization at the other end of the galaxy, and they were so smart, they were so they were improving so much, but then AI turned on them once again. It's basically what this movie basically is is the Matrix with the AI idea combined with Independence Day like that's seriously what it is and they fall out because of that and the it's the theory i actually looked this up this is an actual theory but the theory since no one's actually been inside the moon there's some people that think that the moon is actually something artificially created not by like god or like science you know happenstance or anything like that whatever you believe but that we actually created it the running theory in the movie of course is aliens but it was just actually their ancestors you know, and that we keep on repeating this cycle where we get so advanced and then we end up destroying ourselves via AI or something like that. And then we have to start all over. That's kind of what it's alluding to. And I really like that because it's something I, I think legit actually happens. But uh, maybe that's why we only have like, you know, the, those 6,000 years theory. Anyway, so we're not getting into all that. But that's the basic plot of the movie. And so basically the humans are trying to survive against the AI and like the whole Matrix parable. And this movie goes into the graphics like hardcore. Now, I don't think it'll anything will ever beat Independence Day. I really don't think so. But that's possibly because I only have nostalgia and has that old school kind of feel to it where the, uh, the special effects were, had to be all done at a microscopic scale but with actual buildings and stuff. So it looks more real in my opinion. I don't think we're ever going to be able to beat that, especially with all the nostalgia and stuff. I could be wrong, but it's hard to beat Independence Day, especially with how great the acting is, the speeches and everything like that. You know, the president's speech and, oh my god, the speech at the end. But that's what this movie is basically trying to do. And even they even have the end scene where the, he's talking to the AI right before they're about to, you know, do their whole special bomb thing. And uh, the, the, the main actress guy, you know, uh, the, I was preaching so much the conspiracy theory the elon musk lover like he like he goes you underestimated us he's just like right before he sets the bomb off you underestimated us and it was good it definitely didn't hit the same though as the father at the end well you, you know tell my children i love them very much you know that whole thing i'm going to play it for y'all because it's just so freaking epic but it was really good. Before I get to that, like the special effects in this one were stellar. We could see in the special effects that, you know, technologies, but not, you know, art artificial sets there. You know, I appreciate that. And I think that's even a little bit better. But technology is really coming along. And they did a really stellar job doing with this one. I'm not sure what the kind of budget there was, but I, I know they didn't get no Marvel budget or anything. But they and it's Lionsgate. So, you know, good budget, but not that much. But the, man, they did a stellar job with all the special effects and the destruction and everything you know some of the you know um, believability of all the uh, uh, scenarios that they survive is a little bit eh but still they did a great job showing the destruction all that, all that stuff man it was off the charts you could definitely try definitely tell they were trying to make their own independence day that's what this movie is basically trying to emulate trying to become i don't know if it'll quite get there but i think a lot of the kids who were born nowadays and appreciate the technology more than they do the old school stuff back in the day even though I'm sure they'll still agree that Independence Day is good, they'll think that this is way. But this is going to be the young kids' Independence Day. Do me a favor. 
Tell my children I love them very much. All right, you alien assholes. In the words of my generation, up you! Dad, what's he doing? Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Good luck, buddy. So yeah, definitely recommend to go and see it. Not quite Independence Day, but it's a pretty good movie. You, you're like one step below that, which is extremely high praise for that. I was thoroughly entertained by it. So if you have any specific questions, then I'll happily answer them in the comments. I can't wait to see what y'all have to say about it. If you don't have a question, then please just leave a smiley face algorithm comment. It really, really helps out the channel. Smash that like button, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications on all so you can see all my future content. Lots of good stuff on here like Baki, DBZ, political, humor, UFC, all sorts of good stuff on here. And please consider joining my memberships. Really, really helps out the channel when you do that. I want to be able to do these videos full time, bring y'all even better quality content. There's lots of cool perks on there for everyone to select. Lots and plenty of good stuff on here for you. So just your consideration would be appreciated. If you don't want to support YouTube or join the membership deal, then you can tip me, which is on the YouTube bar right there, or you can go to Venmo. PayPal, Cash App, all the links to that being in the description and the first comment. So hit me up on the in there if you don't want to do the, uh, the YouTube stuff. And please follow me on all my social media platforms like Rumble especially. Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, they'll all be there too. That's basically it. Y'all are awesome. Peace out, my friends. Y'all have a wonderful rest of the day. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon.